Good morning, everybody, and welcome back to our channel. So we moved the chicks, or the pullets, into their chicken shack, and we've had them in there for a few days, and now we're going to take them out for their first time to run around. And we, in the meantime, made a few updates to the chicken shack we wanted to go over those with you maybe give you a few details on some things that a few people have asked about so you're gonna see our video of us moving them to the chicken shack which was several days ago and then we're gonna show you today them actually coming out to get on green grass for the first time so come along go hey now, I can't remember where I got these fancy chicken crates at, but if I can remember, I'll put it down below so that y'all can, can find it. That's our thing. Pretty nice, isn't it? So when you're moving chickens, it is best to move them in the evening and it's getting quite close to evening not as late as we'd like but we actually have company coming over later so we wanted to get them moved before they got here um and probably a pet carrier or the actual chicken crates would be best but you know you, you work with what you got Actually got this fencing. You can get this off of I think Premier One. It's Premier One chicken fencing. And the difference with that chicken fencing is, is that you've got the really small gaps at the bottom to work their way up, and they're only like two inches wide. Where a lot of the uh, believe the livestock stuff is a four by six or something. It's bigger. We've we've got some more stuff. But we actually got their used rolls that we found. But we found three rolls, all 164 feet long, because that's what they, the big rolls come in. And they already come with their little poles that you stick in the ground. So it's a really easy setup to put up. But we got all three rolls for less than what we pay for one roll. So it was a really great deal. But anyway, I just put up with just a regular gate. Of course, this isn't electrified. But I ended up to connect for our latch, I just took a piece of two inch PVC and slid it over a T-post that I put here in the ground so that I wouldn't have any problems with kind of just tying this to the edge of this to make sure that we didn't get any grounding out. Now I have seen some tricks from some other people too to make it real nice and easy so I don't have to, you know, kind of tie it. I've seen a lot of people, they'll, they'll cut a slit in the pipe and then they'll run this little pole through the slit to go down, which I am going to try later, but you can't obviously do it with a T-pose, with a two-inch piece of PVC going over a T-pose. All right, well, before I let them out, I was going to just go over a couple things just to show you. We did finish our gutters up along the top. So it just makes like a big old U all the way around it. And then I just put a little downspout over there for the time being until I get the a, a better rain catchment set up, set up over here for them. So I'm planning on doing something to where I keep this to where I can put something all here to mount so that the bucket will actually just sit along this. Probably still gonna go with a small catchment and then we'll have it redrain off the excess to maybe another 
bigger catchment somewhere else. But I didn't want to put too much weight on this, and you know, because I'd hate to come out here after a big rain and all of a sudden the chicken shack's on the side. So, but yeah, just got the, the gutter all put up. And we did put up on, I don't know if you can see it over here, a little solar light. It's a, a motion sensor, a dust till dawn solar light on both ends. And the front door just to possibly even if any other predators came up that light coming on would maybe help us spook them because this one here to the door is I don't know roughly about 10 feet or so and I know that I've already tested it out at night and I can be walking on the outside of that fence and this will pick up from out there. Great. They've actually got three settings. They've got one to where it only comes on when you walk by it. Uh, there's another setting where it's a dim light that stays on all the time and then when you walk by it it brightens up. And I think there's a third setting to where it always stays on bright. Something like that. They worked out pretty good. They're solar powered. You don't have to worry about them. You can easily just, one little screw hangs them up there, they're sturdy. They've got a lot of little LEDs in them. I think they work out pretty good. Now, another thing, you can see that <coughs> I used to have a string hanging out of here. And I ended up with some cable and some little clamp things that I had laying around the shop, actually. Because obviously chickens didn't like the string hanging in there. And they picked it loose and picked right on through it. Because I came out here just to play and see the, how it was working one day and pff, string just came right on out. And I was like, what the heck? I thought the knot on came untied or something. Retied it back up. Next day, same thing. String just came right on out. Nope. Chickens decided to peck on it. So, I would suggest if you're gonna do a system like I did on mine, get you something to where the chickens can't peck through. Okay. So, let's see if they're wanting to come out. Like home? Well, good morning, ladies. Hello. Y'all want to come outside? You want to show everybody those first steps? Come on. Up. Oh, that's a winner. I'm really surprised it's not the wine bowl. No, the Sussex is just going to sit there. Oh, look. Blocking the way. Everybody's wanting to come out. Oh, there we go. Who's next? Well, they seem like they're all crowded, not like they want to come out, but they're a little scared. These sausages are so pretty. Yep. They seem like they're all wanting to push their ways out, but it seems like they might be a little scared. Come on, ladies. There we go. There we go. There you go. Just push your way out. Push your way out. Shove them out of the way. Aren't they just beautiful? Oh, and another thing, we did find out, my wife really looked into it so that we could easily determine a lot easier on our Coco Morans and our Dominique. Dominique's, which is this guy right over there, you'll see that his feet are yellow yellow color. And these Coco Morans, their feet are more of oh, got a white to them, no yellow. It'll be easier to tell once the combs come in, um, because they have uh, one has the rose comb. But for now, since their combs are in, well, the color of the feet is really helping us determine. <laughs> well, obviously they're excited. So for me to remember, I did it pretty easy. Coco Moran, Coco, white, marshmallow. You put marshmallows in your cocoa. Ta-da! That's how I remember it. Well, some of 
Somebody's excited. But, we still got some stays in there, ladies. Come on. What? You know, I almost think they're chicken. Hmm. Total bad joke. <laughs> Come on. Okay, well, looks like we may have to go inside and get the rest out. Now we did something a little different with our silkies. Because the silkies are smaller, and these chickens, not so much pick on them, but they're bigger, and they can pick on them, so we do keep the silkies separate. Plus, all these chickens that we pick, we pick for a couple of reasons. Um, mostly, they're dual purpose, some are just layers. They're all heritage breeds, and they're all good at free ranging. <clears throat> Excuse me. Silkies, however, are not the, your free range kind of bird, so they've got their own little area. So let's show you that. Well, this is a little setup we made for them. This is a little chicken house thing that we got on a clearance somewhere. And this little fence thing around it was our traveling little dog fence, you know, when we take the RV or something out somewhere to keep them, you know, from being, you know, they could sit on the porch area in front of the trailer. But we figured it, you know, the silky is a little short. They should be able to hopefully not fly out of it because I don't think they have a lot of their feathers and stuff yet on their wings to fly maybe, so. We'll see how it works. Well, look at that. Look at those cute little things. But you can see they're they're a little smaller still. Yeah, like all the other chickens, they've already got all their, pretty much, most of their feathering and stuff in. These guys, still are some little late bloomers. They don't have all their stuff, I think, in yet. They're so cute, though. They're fluffy butts. But that's just pretty much nothing but fluff. They're probably about half that size. One addition we did make to the chicken coop was this little screen right here. And what we were trying to accomplish, if the chickens splash water, we didn't want it getting on the wood and kind of making a muck of the flooring. This is 5 eighths plywood. And I have a friend from high school, Lee, who he's a homesteader as well, and he said he I think he said he was putting down vinyl flooring in his to make cleanup easier. And he has been a great resource for giving ideas. And so I want to say thank you to him. But that gave us an idea in the future we might install some vinyl flooring or tile or something just to make cleanup easier. But in the interim, these cups, nothing's fail proof. So the pipe could bust, the cups could give, and we wanted to keep water from getting in the coop and on the flooring. So this screen has worked out really well. So any splashing they do, it just goes straight through. In the winter time, we will probably cover this up with plastic just to keep the chickens warm. But for the most part, this has been working out really well. It's held down with four screws, so no predators can get in. And it, if we need to clean, it's real easy. Pull the screws up, pull the whole frame out. We can clean and put it back down. It's been working out really well. On a quick note, when Jeff put in this bamboo as a roost, we love our free materials, he thought that this was going to be a problem, but they've been getting up there just fine. So I just wanted to add that quick tidbit there. Okay. And I probably haven't gone through, I think I've, I've heard a couple of questions before also on, you know, we use this bottom area for some storage. We keep their feed and stuff in there. And 
we we went and got actually some storage buckets to prevent critters from getting in it because where I kept some feed before in our makeshift shop, future shop, I noticed that obviously I had a little mouse that was stockpiling some corn that he got into and had a nice little pile in the corner. So we ended up finding out you can get the name brand buckets or something like that. This is a food grade bucket. Now we got our stuff from uh, Home Depot. Now I found out that not all Home Depots carry them. Bucket was like four something. I think the lid was seven something, I think. Uh, which is this lid, which is this the Beak Tight brand. <clears throat> and it'll fit on a three and a half to a five gallon plastic bucket. So for about 13 bucks, it'll hold, well, 25 pounds. I know two of these, a 50 pound, a 50 pound bag, you know, you'll need two buckets. So, but it's, it's a, it, the lid screws on and you've got this rubber seal goes around. screws on really nicely and then this part fits over the top of your bucket you take like a little rubber mallet and just beat it around and you got to beat it on there pretty good because it fits real super tight and there's a, a rubber seal down in there too and so they work really great to hold the feed and keeps moisture out it keeps the bugs out and it keeps little mice from stockpiling your stuff. Okay. Now I know I told you about our electric fence. This is what we have charging it. We've had this now for a couple of years. Another one of those things, if you know me, I look for the deals. We got this charger and another like electric charger and a bunch of of the like electric fence tape bunch of poles really really good deal on it so this is already a used little one of those little small solar panel setups and it was already used when we got it we've already had it for a couple of years now too uh, I believe it says it's a 10 mile but it works this fence real well and it's, it turned out to be real great. Plus, it, it hooks up real easy. It's just got a couple of little screw points underneath here to hook your wires up to. A little on and off switch into the bottom so you can turn it off easy. Solar powered. Don't have to worry about plugging it up. Weatherproof. You can just stick a T-post in the ground. It, it's got a slit in the back to where this thing just sits on. And it, it, it works great. I know when, with our goats, we ran this thing good ways with all that taping of strips work great and it's working really great on this and this is a 164 feet of fence and charges it up a little bit of sun during the day works all through the night great little system and the battery on the inside if it ever goes bad it's just a small battery I don't think they're actually that expensive to actually replace. Take that battery out and put another one. It's not like it's an internal battery that can't be changed. You can actually change the battery out in these things, too. So, all right. Of course, when I sat down to edit the video, I realized that a good amount of our video was cut off at the end. Something went wrong with our camera. Not to worry. I'm pretty sure we will come around to those things again at some point. But if you know someone that's interested in homesteading, clearing raw land, or turning raw land into a homestead, please share this video with them. Don't forget to subscribe, like, and click that bell notification so you never miss one of our videos. You have a fantastic day. Thanks for joining us.